How are you doing? Today is the first video of a multi-part series about how to set up the utility systems in your shop uh, for optimal performance. Um, I recently redid this shop and I put a lot of thought into what I did um, for every utility system uh, in the garage. And I want to share that with you um, so you can get better ideas about the best way to um, set up the utility systems in your shop. Today we're talking electrical. We're going to go through my electrical panel, I'll explain how I did it, the theory behind um, where I ran outlets, why I ran outlets, uh, the amps of the outlets, so on and so forth. But before I get started, I'd like to ask that you please like this video as well as subscribe to this channel. We've got a lot, a lot of great content like this from woodworking to automotive projects to stuff you have to do around the house. Um, it's very beneficial and I like sharing everything I do and everything I learn with you. So please uh, subscribe to my channel. With that being said, let's get started. Before we start, I'd like to tell you I'm not an electrician. Um, this video is for educational purposes only. Um, if you have any questions about electrical safety, uh, make sure you uh, consult a licensed electrician. Opening up my electrical panel, this is a 100 amp service panel. Um, that means you have 100 amps of capacity coming in here. I made a diagram right here, uh, Microsoft Excel of what is where, and it corresponds to everything um, over here. These are the normal size breakers. These are smaller mini size breakers. Um, they will fit in a normal box. Um, they just save a lot of space. You can squeeze a lot more in there. As you can see, I have a full box. Um, you can see this right here, the number that's your amperage on your breaker. For most tools, you want 20 amps. Uh, when you run 20 amps, you have to have a special 20 amp electrical outlet, which I'll show you what that looks like uh, briefly. But you can't use your standard 15 amp outlet for these. Uh, with that being said, you can see how everything's laid out. Um, I have my shop organized a certain way. Um, as you can see, uh, 20 amp dust collection system, um, 20 amp furnace and electrical outlets. I have one blank in here because I had to put it in here so there wasn't a gap with, uh, with the space saving outlets. Two, uh, 20 amp 220 volt tool, 30 amp 220 volt tool, that's for my planer. Um, I have um, a 20 amp 220 volt air conditioning system and a 20 amp blank. Right here I have all my 220 volt uh, breakers in the same location so I know where they are. If you go and look up on the left, um, I have lights in one circuit, then I have ceiling outlets on another circuit. When I show you my ceiling, you'll see that there's a double gang box. So there's an electrical a light outlet um, that is on the lighting circuit and one that is just ceiling outlets. I'll explain that uh, a little bit better as we go on. Um, the shop is divided into two parts. Uh, the right side of the shop, all the left outlets and right outlets in the double gang boxes. Uh, you know, each the left are on one on one breaker, um, the right are on the other, and the same thing so with the other half of the garage. And then you can see I have air conditioning in the shop as well as outside shed GFI. This little red guy means it's a GFI. When you put this on here, um, you know, it protects you from electrical shock outside um, and in those outlets. With that being said, I'll show you the runs and how they are. When running everything from the box to the other half of the garage, I wanted a centralized location uh, where everything would meet so I could troubleshoot things down the road um, from the floor level here without having to go in the attic. So what I did was I got a large piece of one inch conduit. I ran it up through the ceiling. It comes straight across to this large box. Uh, I essentially call it the brain box. Um, but what it is, is it's a gigantic uh, conduit box I purchased from Home Depot. Um, it's probably eight inches by eight inches and probably four inches deep. From there, all my 220 volt lines for the other side of the shop go out that way down here, as well as my 110 <clears throat> volt lines. They come to these outlets first, which light up, these jet eyes. And the nice thing about them lighting up is I know if there's power to this circuit going out or this circuit going off, to troubleshoot everything. Um, this is my uh, one of my 220 uh, volt outlets right here. Um, and if I need to troubleshoot the system, I know how it's ran for that reason. I don't have to go and dig around in the attic. Um, from there, we have outlets every four feet with the left outlet and right outlet on their own breaker, like I talked about. Four feet, four feet coming around the bend, four feet, four feet. And then that's the last outlet in that circuit. Coming from the brain box, I also have another circuit uh, coming off this direction, um, up on the under, on the, up on the top side 
uh, of the drywall, but it runs right over here to the corner of the garage. That is just for dust collection. That's a 120 volt line, but one difference in here is I actually ran an extra black wire and marked it in there. And that wire goes all the way back to the main service panel. So if I ever get a larger dust collector, which I probably will one day, it's gonna be a 220 volt system. And all I have to do then is just get that extra wire connected in, in the box and then change out my outlet and I'll have a 220 volt system here. Going back to the brain box, you can follow it down. Over here, to the wall, uh, to the left of it, this is a 220 volt line um, that comes down and feeds a uh, tool outlet there, as well as a 220 volt tool outlet there. Now when you go and you take a look up here, you can see what's this one for, right? That's a different colored one. That's a 220 volt outlet <clears throat> that's on the air conditioning circuit that powers the air conditioner. I put it there. So if I ever lose power to the air conditioner or some issue and get troubleshoot, I could plug in to this outlet and know if I lost power to the entire area and kind of to break it apart and uh, troubleshoot things as necessary. Right here at my electrical panel, um, this is where the air compressor normally goes. Um, I have a 220 uh, volt outlet right there. Uh, for it if I did decide to wire it 220, but I also have a 110 uh, volt outlet there too Coming from the electrical panel the way the outlets are spaced in the whole shop or every four feet You have a double, double gain every four feet. You have a double gain and that just marches out through the entire shop So this is the back of the shop and I know sometimes I may have to work outside. I want to run an electrical outlet to the outside of the building, but I don't have to run one out the door, you know, through the exterior to the back to run hedge trimmers or any type of tool that I need. So what I did was this. I got a PVC pipe. I ran it through the wall and I have a cap on both ends. So if I need to run an electrical cord or airline or anything to the back, all I have to do is uncap this side and uncap the outside and I could just feed what I want right through. Little things like this make a big difference. Another thing I utilized in the shop was I have my, obviously my switches, uh, modern type of toggle switch, but I got these cool switch covers off of Amazon. I'll put a link to them in the comments below. But for switches that you don't normally have to switch on and off, if you take a look, it makes it so it's hard to tap. You still can, but you have to be very thought out in where you're going to hit it through here. You can also use a uh, pencil eraser or a pen if you want to do it. I use this for some of the power, like the exterior lights that I don't turn on and off uh, too often, as well as the uh, heat fan that's in the attic that the old owner put in. I kept the wiring for it, but I'm not gonna use it that often. So I wanted to make it so this kind of protects it from being uh, turned on and off. And you have to be very conscious of what you're doing to, uh, to activate it. So here we are, dead center in the middle of my shop. Everything on the right side, the outlets that are in the wall, the left side outlets are on one side, the right side outlet in the double gain box is on a different circuit. So essentially I have two 20 amp circuits in each double gain electrical box. The same is true with the right side of the shop. Um, I'll take you in and I'll show you what one looks like on this side of the shop so you get what I'm talking about. So right here is a double gain box. Uh, that means there are simply just two outlets in the box. If there were one, two, three, there'd be a triple gain box. If you look, the left side, this is on one 20 amp circuit. The right side, this is on another 20 amp circuit. Um, and I talked earlier about how uh, outlets look different if they're 20 amp versus a 15 amp outlet. You can see right here, they have this little tail that comes off at the end. That's how you know this is a 20 amp outlet. If you run 20 amp service to any outlets, you have to make sure you have this outlet. So you can't buy the cheap, Home Depot run of the mill outlets to put in your shop. You have to spend a little bit more. I think you're about twice as much, but it's a better quality outlet and you get better service out of it. Right now, you're looking at a ceiling outlet. Um, as you can tell, this is a 20 amp outlet like we just talked about. This is actually, uh, you know, for me to plug tools in, whatnot, it's live all the time. The ceiling circuit is on its own dedicated circuit like I showed you in my breaker panel. The right side, this is on the lighting circuit. So when I flip the lights on and off, for the shop, this pop, the power of this outlet goes on and off with that switch. On the back end of this, 
you have a pigtail coming up that goes out and feeds all the individual lights behind each one of these boxes. The benefit of doing this is as time goes on, you may want to put lights in a different spot, right? In doing that, I have an ability to plug in a light and hang it here if I want, and it's part of the lighting circuit without me having to, you know, try to hardwire something in. So I can essentially plug it in. That makes it so the shop is very adaptable down the road. On the ceiling, I also have a 220 volt outlet here. One right here. And I also have one right there. This actually had to change out after I got a larger uh, tool to a 220 volt 30 amp instead of the 20 amp, which the other ones are. Um, that was for my Powermatic planer. Um, and because of the way I ran everything, I was able to just run Romex around the back end and it worked out great to switch that out. Right here is a double 220 uh, volt 20 amp outlet. This powers my table saw as well as my jointer, uh, which is in the center of the shop. So in the center right here, I'll have all those heavy duty tools set up and the power is right up top. You don't have to run extension cords across aisles or anything like that. That's another reason why it's really beneficial to have outlets on the ceiling. One other interesting thing that I did add um, is a bathroom fan. Um, if I'm using any type of harsh chemicals in here, um, I will flip the fan on with the switch that's right over there and it'll start to pull the fumes out. Uh, if it's a combustible fume, you don't want to use it for that uh, because it's not rated. It's not an explosion proof fan. That's what you would need for something like that. Um, but for just fumes, any odd odors in here, uh, even for COVID when we had a party, I'd flip this fan on and it will suck everything out straight out the side of the garage. Um, there's a little uh, vent pipe that goes out there and goes out to Eve. Uh, so it doesn't even go into the attic. Uh, that was a cool little thing that I added that I think was real nice. Are made in four different rows. The first row right here, second row right here, third row right here, and the fourth row right here. Each line you have one outlet and one outlet in the front of the garage, one in the center which is about 14 feet in, and then one in the back. Since we're on the subject of lights, I put these high bay lights in the shop in three set of rows. This is a three and a half car garage, so each uh, car length uh, essentially has a row of three uh, LED lights in there. And these are called high bay lights. So that's for uh, in a barn or something like that that has a 12, 15 foot ceiling high up. You put the lights and it kind of just drips down into the whole building um, and it gives you that really good ambient light. Uh, for my shop, I wanted to get these, so I did, um, and having them eight feet off of the ceiling hasn't been a problem at all. It gives you a lot of really good light, and uh, if you forget to turn the power off, it's real economical. You also don't have to change bulbs, and they're real easy to install. Again, these are LED high bay lights. I'll put a link to what I used on the comments below also. Last but not least, one thing I, I did wire into the system worth mentioning is just your normal extension cord reel. While I do have outlets spaced all throughout the shop like we talked about, the reel is really beneficial because if I'm working on a uh, car on the driveway, I could just run this and go straight out with it and pop that door. Um, and it eliminates the need for having to having any extension cords uh, in the garage at all because I could just run this guy right out and I'm good to go. Also, if I'm doing quick jobs or I need, uh, need power in a certain place and I'm using all the outlets in the area, I could run this there too. So it's a great redundancy. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video about the electrical system in the shop. I got a whole set of videos like this on my channel, um, such as how to install a urinal in your garage um, and running the water lines. Uh, to the drainage system, so on and so forth, uh, even how to run your airlines in your garage. So feel free to check out my channel, um, subscribe to it and like this video. If you got any comments, anything you did in your shop you thought that worked, please uh, please say so in the comments below. I really appreciate that you watching this video. Good luck with your shop and have a great day.